Hey everybody, Julian Marchese here. Today is December 1st, uh, 2013, and in this video I want to showcase a new Excel worksheet that I've created that uh, kind of makes analyzing markets, at least in the way that I look at the markets from a quantitative perspective, a lot easier, a lot smooth, and just um, I hope that you guys can get, I guess, some different perspective on the markets and uh, maybe a new way to to uh, look at historical data. Um, so I like to use a lot of Excel uh, modeling to basically automatically take the data, the most recent uh, market data, and try and give me some biases in which I would incorporate some discretion and my experience into making actual trading decisions. Um, and recently I've been working on a correlation uh, workbook um, that you you can see right here, this the display page of the workbook. I'm going to go a little bit into how it works. Obviously, I won't be able to go into very high detail, but uh, I'll be able to explain pretty well um, how it works and why this is useful information to me. So first of all, you're looking at the the, the output screen of my Excel worksheet, and I'll go through to the individual components at the top you've got um, the inputs. This is the, the yellow boxes are the areas that you edit or a person can edit when looking at the Excel worksheet to look at data in different ways. So first we have the correlation index here. Um, now this is just a drop down where I can choose out of 74 groups uh, to compare on this chart right over here and I'll go into a little bit more detail what that specifically is. The look back period here, which currently says 40, is basically um, that that number tells me how much data I want to look at the most recent market data. So if I put in 40 right here, that means I want to be comparing the last 40 days of market information to historical data. Then I've got the market one, which is the market I want to be looking at the actual um, data so this is the market that I'm looking to trade basically the, where I want to get a bias out of and market two is my confirmation market in which I'll go into more detail so the point of this Excel spreadsheet let me go over is it runs a correlation test so basically it looks at this look back period the 40 days which I can edit it looks at the last 40 or what X number of days and it compares it to all the other periods of X number of days in the entire data set which is for the S&P 500, for example, since 1997. These are the E-mini futures I'm looking at. So it tests for all those and it finds the highest correlation. After that, it looks at all the data sets. It, it obviously ranks them um, in order of the highest correlated to the lowest. And then I use this market two over here to confirm that uh, those highly correlated times or the data sets that have been pulled out, I want to confirm that it's similar with another market. So for example, if I pull up my e-signal chart here, this charting platform here, I bring up the S&P, let's put on a daily chart, and then I also put up oil in the background, which is the black line. So you can see if I was testing over the last 40 days, we've seen a huge move up move in the last two months basically 40 days we've seen a huge up move but oil has traded very inversely to the S&P 500 it's actually fallen quite drastically now if I were just looking at a correlation workbook just looking at the S&P 500 this period over here where the S&P jumped from June all the way into August might come back as a highly correlated scenario because it was very it was a large move um, and it roughly took two months. Let's just assume it took a little, it went a little bit longer. But this wouldn't actually come up in my output because look, oil actually rallied quite strongly. So what's happening right now between the relationship of the S&P and oil is completely different than what happened in July. So I don't want to be looking at the July area as a uh, credible uh, data point to extrapolate from. So that's basically what that market two thing is for. That's it's it's looking for confirmation of what's happening in the markets right now. So let's go over what you're seeing here in these charts. The first chart over here 
is the correlation index, so that's what I got over here, versus the look back period. So the last the black line here is the last 40 days or whatever the look back period is. You can see if I put 20 in there, it will shrink. It will only go to the last 20 days. You'll see it moves to the left. Let's just put it back into 40 for this example. The red line, however, is whatever correlation index that I've chosen. Um, and it shows the correlated period, which you can see here, the dip in the red line, dip in the black line, then a move higher, move higher in the black line, and then it ends here. And now we're extrapolating. So I, this is the important information. This is telling me, um, this is giving me my bias, essentially. So the most highly correlated one, group one, is showing basically neutral activity or slightly bearish activity over the next 30 days is what it's showing here. So from roughly 40 to 70. So that's what, this just allows me if I want to check specific points. So I switch it to group two, group three. You can see uh, group three is actually very strong. So that's an important thing to look at. So let's just bring it back to group one. So that's what this chart is for. This chart, the average percent change, number of days out of top correlation indexes. Basically it shows me three graphs. It shows me the, my, the top five, top 10, and top 25 highly correlated instances in history. So obviously the blue line is in a way most important, but it is the most volatile because it's only averaging out five days. But I, I tend to look at the red data point the most because it's the top 10 and it kind of weights a good amount of instances. But looking at the 5, 10, and 25 is important. So basically this is saying if I bought today on the premise, okay, on the premise of um, the last 40 days being very correlated with other data points, if I were to extrapolate, if I were to buy today, I would basically make money one to 30 days out and you could see how much percentage change. So if I were to buy today and sell 10 days later, on average, I would make around half a percent. If I were to sell 30 days later, on average, I would probably make, utilizing the 10 figure, let's say, 27 days out, 2%. And you can see there are some discrepancies between the 5, 10, and 25, and that's something interesting to look at. Lastly, on, well, second to last, we have just another visual representation of this data. This just allows me to see in a more colorful fashion where the sweet spots are. So I wanna see correlation between the 5, 10, and 25 in sweet spots. So I want to see where there is most bullish activity and bearish activity. You can see that there was a point 13 to 17 days out from current market data that there might be a little bit of faulty activity and there was a strong period in the early, early days. Then this last chart below here shows the highest correlated, the top 10 basically, the ones that were averaging out here in the red. Um, I'm showing a visual re representation of all the extrapolations, and you can see most of them have been positive. They end positively, at least. Six out of, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of the ten. So 70% ended positive 30 days out, and that's confirmed by uh, the, the bars showing positivity over here. Now let's go over how this might be useful and uh, an interesting way of looking at the markets. So we've seen a huge move um, in the S&P 500, um, basically since the base in October. So this is something interesting that I, I wanted to sell. I think just from experience, maybe we're, we're getting a little, you know, overextended. So uh, I found it interesting that we, it might be a good idea to just test the latest part of this move, see if this, um, Weaker part of the move obviously had a very bullish area here. Let's test if the weak area, if there are any, um, however the market's acting right now, if there are any weaknesses coming about. So let's go back to my Excel spreadsheet and let's just look at the last 20 days. Because that's about, um, about the, the period of time of when the market started getting a little choppier in this uptrend move. So when we compare this against uh, WTI oil, the figures actually got a little bit more positive. This recent action in the S&P when compared to oil, how oil has been acting, is actually quite positive. 
Um, you can see there is basically choppy action until 10 days out. So this confirms to us, utilizing oil at least, that the market is in a strong uptrend, and, and that should continue, and it should continue. However, over the next, say, week or two weeks, maybe uh, we could ask caution, maybe there is a pullback that we could buy into. Let's next test it over the euro. Now what I'm doing here is I'm utilizing different markets to get some sort of confirmation. Now you can see the euro in this case, it has been acting differently. Um, we are seeing a lot of bearish activity and believe it or not, we're seeing very consistent bearish activity uh, going out uh, 10 days to the 15 day range and even out 20 days. You can see the red bars, look how uh, low they get. See the sweet spot I would say is in around the 20 day range. So the euro is showing some uh, conflicting messages when compared against the oil test. Um, in the early area, there is more weakness with the euro. So right now, just testing oil in the euro, there's uh, a bit of a bearish inclination in the SP going forward given the last 20 days. So let's test the yen now. Interesting stuff here too. We're seeing a lot of negativity in the early, early period, the la early 10 days. And then it starts getting choppy to slightly bullish. This is confirming our thesis that over the long run, there is probably going to see some continued bullish activity, considering that the S&P 500 is a rotational market with a upside bias. Let's take a look at how gold has been acting versus the S&P. Not giving us much. Obviously, I wait the 10 and 5 days a little more, but the 25 days is showing negativity. This is neutrality right here. I don't really want to use this as a, a data point. Now, the euro yen is usually something interesting to look at. It is a uh, risk market. Uh, you can see early on, again, we're seeing some negativity based on the last 20 days of market activity. Well, let's look at the bond market finally and some choppy activity turns bullish. So the only market that this confirmed bullish activity 20 days out further is the Euro. So that might be something interesting. There might be a natural trade between the Euro and S&P based on this information. But uh, we're, I'm unsure of that. I'll have to look into it. However, based on the other markets we have been testing, um, the recent market action over the last 20 days is suggesting some sort of negative edge over the next 5 to 10 market days. And that that makes sense considering the amount of bullish activity we've seen. It's starting to get quite extended. This doesn't mean short sell the market here at 1806, wherever we're trading. It doesn't mean to do that. It just tells us that there is a negative bias here. There is something that we want to see the market kind of confirm. And if we do see that negative bias and the market's acting like it should be, that could give us some really good reason to go with the trend and start buying below 1800 for a big move back to 1850, for example. So that's how I want to use this information. Lastly, um, let's take a look at a more of a longer time frame. So let's go 50 days out. You can see the, the difference between the euro and the S&P here. Again, 10 to 20 days out, we're seeing some iffy stuff, but uh, overall a bullish picture 20 days out and further. Let's look at the yen here. Again, some mostly bullish activity other than a, a few anomalies here in the top five, and you can see maybe this flash crash. This is the flash crash, by the way, the high, most highly correlated one with the yen, which they did obviously go very correlated when the flash crash happened. That's why you're probably seeing some negative activity 26 days out. Let's also take a look at, say, oil. Again, some good bullish activity here. The reason for that probably is because oil is, is typically positively correlated with the market. Oil has uh, fallen off quite severely. And uh, just from a technical picture, it's overextended. So we should see a bounce in oil, and that could take stocks up. Let's take a look at gold. Again, broadly positive. And uh, let's look at the euro yen, and then we'll look at the bond market finally. Euro yen, some uh, some neutrality until the last uh, twenty to thirty days, and then let's look at the thirty year. Thirty year presents uh, kind of a, actually a bearish opportunity here, but uh, given the consistency of the other markets, I wouldn't look at it 
as much. Again, look at the 10 and 5 day differences. This is only a 5 day average difference, so um, I, would, I wouldn't take this as anything too great. And you can see the 30 day uh, extrapolation chart basically is showing that it's, it's really choppy. So you can see how this type of analysis could be interesting. We came to the conclusion that there is a long-term bullish edge in the S&P 500 right here. However, we also found out, given the correlation testing that we've had against different markets, that there might be some uh, shakiness in the market over the next five to 10 days. That doesn't give me the confidence to start buying the market here. And obviously, from a technical perspective, that usually isn't the best case. However, what if we start seeing bullish activity over the next five to 10 days? That's also information that we could use. For example, his histor history tells us that we should see some bearish activity, some neutral activity, given the test we just ran. However, if the market starts acting bullish, that could tell us that there's something different happening right now and that we need to test the last 10 days, 10 days out, of course. And that could give us new information. So, with that being said, um, I'm looking just off in the S&P 500 based on the information we went over utilizing my new Excel uh, worksheet. I'm looking for some sort of neutral activity. I want to be buying uh, lower tests and I might also want to be selling some extremes if we get above to 1825. I want to be playing this neutral until we start getting into the 20 days out which is starting to get near Christmas and this also coincides with seasonality. Typically we see some sort of a bullish action in around the Christmas uh, time. So you can see how we're usually utilizing this historical analysis, this quantitative analysis, combining it with sentimental analysis, some uh, common market themes that we know. You know, s and is typically bullish. We know that the Christmas time, December bring, and the January effect brings some bullishness into the stock market. So we're combining all these things. This Excel worksheet is giving us just a better visual representation of that. And it gives us the confidence to take the trade when the market starts acting a little shaky over the next 10 days, and it gives us a great buying opportunity. So, again, I hope you guys got some sort of, I guess, new perspective uh, out, of, uh, out of this video, of the way I look at the markets with regards to the quantitative analysis that I'm talking about here. I think uh, this is some very useful information. Um, and I'd encourage you guys to try try this out for yourself. Maybe learn some Excel programming, um, utilizing Excel, exporting, importing data from various uh, you know charting platforms. If your chart charting platform allows that, I use eSignal for that. Um, and see see if visualizing data in different ways like this helps you in your trading or gives you more confidence, as it has for myself. So I I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, visit MarcheseFinancial.com for more information on my trading, my journal, actually Marchese for all my live trades. I try to post basically all my trading currently. FYI, this is December 1st. I am short some 10 years right now. That's the only current positions I have right now. Also visit LeadersInvestmentClub.com. Sign up there. That's the club I founded earlier this year. It's been getting some traction. We've got some great educational material on there. Again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a great December trading month. Happy trading, guys.